Welcome back, everybody, to RimWorld. Uh, first things first, it's so hot in my office right now that the adhesive keeping my soundproofing up on the walls is melting. Uh, so if I sound different as the episode goes through, or if I'm attacked by foam bricks midway through, you know why. Um, also, I might die of heat stroke. We've got here the biggest raid we've ever seen uh, in this entire playthrough. We've got, I think... Oh my god. <laughs> I was going to say, I think a few of those will probably be empty. Uh, as 26 people. Not only that, on our front wall, we have an infested ship module. I don't know even where to begin with this. Bear in mind, we've got, what is that, 10 people with weaponry. Bear just has a pistol. Roger Wilco apparently has... Okay, right, let's get, let's get our people equipped first and foremost. What I'm thinking is the best strategy here is to maybe remove one of these wall chunks and wake up the insects. Um, oh, but if you look here, look, 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 look. We've got an open door. Do you think we could bait them up through here? And then when they get to kind of this area, shoot this, open that up. As they're fighting the insects, we can swoop in and take them out. It's dangerous. How has this happened? I thought I fixed all my wind turbines. <laughs> Don't worry about it. God knows. Um, yeah, see, I'm not sure about this one. I don't know how the hell we're going to survive it. This this genuinely looks to me like a game over. Um, that's 26, and they've got actual shooty bang bang guns and not just pickaxes. Okay, here's the plan. Let's take all of our useless people, by which I mean people without guns for the timing. If we survive it, though, we, we are the ones with the shooty bang bang guns. Get them over there. Then we'll take our people with, with actual firearms. Let's draft them up, and let's put them... How do we want to commit to this? We go shut the door and fight them over the kill box, deal with the insects secondly, or... We try and be smart about it. We try and be clever about it. And we maybe open up a bit of wall here. Or again, bait them through. Shoot this. Open up the insects. Let them kill one another. And we sweep up the the stragglers. I think that might be the best bet. I think by default, they'll path through the closest entrance. Which is going to be the south door. Let's see what happens here. This, this could be a horrible mistake. They might start coming through this direction. Let's not wake up the insects until we know their plan of attack. Um, can our people even hit them from there? No. Let's bring all of the, the shooty bang bang gun people forward. Another, another little bit here. Not too far. Um, shit. I mean, there's no cover either way. Let's go like, uh, I feel like Roger Wilco is too close to the insects. Let's go like that. The worst case scenario would be, of course, open it. Yeah, okay. So they are coming through here. Shooting up the insect thing, having the insects gunning for our people rather than the enemy. Let's bring you guys over in this direction instead then. Okay, there we are, there we are, there we are. That's what I like to see. We can kind of focus fire a little bit here. Sharamus, I'm going to get you to run across and shoot the insects. Okay, this is about right. This is about right. Oh, God, this is so dangerous. Go. Perfect, 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 perfect. Okay, you guys can line up over here now. Oh, God, five is getting peppered. Fingers is getting peppered. Five is immortal, don't forget. So it's not the end of the world. Okay, that actually worked out quite well. The thing I'm concerned about is we've still got stragglers here. We've got about eight stragglers going through the main entrance. So we're going to have to try and tidy up as fast as we can. These guys and the insects. And then also go and deal with the stragglers. Okay, this is going to be a bit messy. This is going to be a bit messy, but bear with us here. The Insecto Queen wasn't too difficult before, as I recall. I See, this is what I'm concerned about, is them using our own defenses against us. We might have to go for a flank. Alternatively, we could just fuck off and see if they'll fight one another. Let's pull up here. I think this is now more important than the insects to deal with. Oh, yeah. They are going to use their own cover against us here. So, why don't we, why don't we line up here instead? Um, force them to come and fight us over the... Let's go, like, here. Force them to come and fight us around the wall. That's what I want to see. It's still a bit of a mess, but it's actually going okay. Good shit. Good shit. It doesn't matter about the wind turbines. Most of them aren't fucking working anyway. So, <laughs> I'm not going to lose too much sleep over that. So, who's down? Dobbs is also down. How are you doing? Oh, you just went down. Shot in the leg. That's fine. That's tendable. Good luck, people. The Insectoid Queen actually did a, did a great job for us there. Look, they're too busy focusing on the, the irrelevant things. Let's get you guys to push forward there. And let's bring these guys forward just in a line. We want to make sure we've got some flank going down there. Lord Winds has been downed as well. Fucking hell. There we go. Oh, man. That was horrible. Okay, so who have we got then? We've got doves that need rescuing straight away. So, Robo Daddy on doves, if you please. We've got Lord Windsor is down. Who's our other doctor here? Uh, that's five. Five is also basically down. Um, I'm going to go ahead and ha go ahead and get you to doctor care to yourself. Seeing as you did a pretty good job of that last time. Wow. I, ca I can't believe that we actually pulled that off. What happens if we tame the insect queen? 
Can we even do that? Surely it'll always be hostile. Particularly when their base is called the Angry Hive. <laughs> I feel like that's not really feasible, is it? Um, right, so five after you've self-tended. Let's go and get Windsor saved. And then after five is self-tended, we can get five tending to Windsor. Uh, but it's going to be a fairly close one by the looks of it. Okay, five is probably okay now. Let's get a couple more. I mean, five is immortal as well, so I'm not too bothered about if five goes down here. Lord Wind's apparently capable of walking again. That's very strange. Uh, five did go down. Oh, five just got shot again, for fuck's sake. Who hit five then? I don't entirely know. Okay, someone fleeing. Uh, oh, Doc. Doc got bad up, back up. You son of a bitch. Okay, immortal perhaps? No, just lucky. Okay. Um, Rubber Daddy's turning to doves. Um, I need someone with, with fast legs here to go rescue five, and that would be you, my friend. Megapede is still going for him, though. What's that Megapede doing? Is that going to cause us problems, do you think? Oh, my God, that five... <laughs> five was capable of walking out and then immediately got shot by another fleeing person. Putting it annihilated by that centipede. Oh, Jesus. Um, Pork is also down. This is a mess. This is a complete fucking mess. It's not even the raid that's killing us now. It's the fact that we can't get our people out of there. These fucking idiots recovering after the combat's over. Right, you guys can go back to business. Let's rescue... No, five, 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 five. Leave. Get out of there. Leave the area. Run. Now, to reiterate, everybody is fine. Pork is bleeding out in one hour. Pork is absolutely not fine. Uh, Robo Daddy, could we maybe prioritize tending to the people who need it the most rather than an immortal man? If that's not much of a problem, my friend. Thank you. I was fucking close. There we are. Pork's okay now. Well, that was a bit of a mess. Let's go best quality medicine. We're fine. That actually wasn't too bad. Bear in mind that we had 10 people, all of which had pretty terrible guns. Uh, and we had the insect hive that, that really didn't do exactly what I was after there. Overall, that's not too terrible. Am I going to try and capture prisoners? Well, given that we are about to go into an ice age, there's not much point. Because uh, there's no way in hell we're going to be able to recruit prisoners before the Ice Age comes in. I will, however, get them all beheaded. I'm hoping we can get at least one quickening from this, because that's a lot of corpses we got there. We'll take apart that insect ship as well in a second and see if we can get anything out of that. Um, must designate a creature who is dead or downed without a head. Now, I'm no expert. Oh, it's because their brain's destroyed. Right, so it's not the fact whether or not they have a head, it's the fact whether or not they have a brain. Got it, okay. Um... That's not too bad. I'm, I'm actually okay with how that ended up. It wasn't ideal. It wasn't perfect, but we're fine. Oh, we actually got one. Hey, nice. Who was that? That was uh, Vin Vincente. Was immortal. Fantastic. What a what a fucking game from that one, huh? Right. Okay. Let's get to get to beheading a bit more then. See what else we can find. That was very very fortunate. Wow. Come on, one more, one more. I believe. Uh, no, 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 no one else is allowed to behead. No one else is allowed to behead. What the hell are you people doing? Get out of here. Right, you, you get back to beheading. Uh, prioritize beheading. And let's go ahead and increase the radius again. Just to make sure. Uh, you are... I don't know why you didn't get designated. Right, let's try that again. There we are. So we've got another person there. Um, this, all this stuff up here has been beheaded, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this is the final one. And we've got a slaver coming in as well. Okay, so we did actually get a quickening from that. There are a couple of people... Uh, still out there. And the Giga Locust is still alive. Just worth bearing in mind, too. So, I think we'll probably go ahead and, uh... Probably go ahead and deal with that in a second. Because that's not really something I want on my front lawn. Um, let's make sure you're beheaded. Not bad. I'm alright with that. Top priority currently is, let's get these, uh... Let, let's get everything buried. Because this is a lot of people to have just lying around. Basically, dead on your front porch. Now, I'm hoping that the Giga Locust will be dealt with by this trade caravan coming through. Okay, yep, there we are. That's what we're after. Perfect. Ku is having a food binge. My mother Vincente died. Oh, and then we beheaded her. Oh, dear. Uh, yeah, you're right. That's pretty fucked up. That would probably, even if even if she was coming to kill you, that would probably have some strange mental side effects. That's a lot of corn. Wow, that is a staggering amount of corn. How are we doing with the meals, by the way? Because uh, I started cooking packages of other meals, right? Um, how are we doing with that? We're not. Okay, so package survival meals. If we could go ahead and set that to critical. Has he not even started cooking those yet? I think I'm going to have to bring that up there for the timing. We could do it with a secondary cook. Do we have any secondary chefs? Yes, we do. Um, oh, it was Roger Wilco is, of course, a cook. But we've also got Fingers as well, who's, who's obviously capable of cookery. Um, let's put that down there. And let's go, go ahead and give him another light. Between the two of them, we should be able to cook enough meals now to get this base 
Ready for the Ice Age, which of course is coming up in five days' time. I'm gonna get Lazy Squad, as in people who didn't help us defend the base there, to come and take apart this vessel. It'll take them a little while. Then we'll get Robo Daddy just to quickly wake up and trade with these guys before they disappear, because I think by the time morning comes around, they might leave. Come on, what do we get from this? Wasn't there a chance of getting AI Persona calls from this? Now, on the subject of... Oh, here we go. Um, on the subject of AI Persona calls... Oh, you're good. Wow, you are good. Um, we've only got really components to trade, but we do have a lot of components. Okay, fair enough. Um, we've got Bongak. Not Immortal. Also not bad. And then we've got go go Gotok, who's good at shooting. Not really into the artistic so much, but... Good. Rab is great if we can come up with enough resources. Sources. Oh god, the hiccups help me. By I Persona Call this time around, we did get two advanced components, a little bit of uranium, and you know, kind of the usual crap you get from ships. Uh, I just want to quickly trade with those guys again, see how many components it would need to... See, even if we sold every component and our advanced components, we would only just be able to... Yeah, we'd have to sell every, all 69 nice components and one advanced component to be able to cover that. I don't know that I can justify that, particularly as we're just about to go into an ice age, and the last thing we want is for the heaters to be to be breaking down. Many of you have pointed out we could just mine up these silver things, and that's exactly what I plan on doing. We, we will get all of that stuff mined up, but top priority has been building building this. And, and obviously, now that this is complete, we never have to worry about it again, because we've, we've got an area we know works for heating, and now we've now got an area we know will work for... Oh, oh sorry, for the Inferno, and this one will obviously work for the, for the ice age. Now, on the subject of this as well, there's, there's been a lot of debate, again, over the air gaps, over the actual insulation use, things like that. Loads of people doing loads of different tests on Discord, and we're all getting different results. What I can say for definite is the air gap is fine. However, the air gap really, to be effective, needs the heaters in between. Bear in mind, the insulation affects the heat transfer rate, right? So with every layer of insulation, it's going to take longer for that central area to cool. What the heaters can do is during those first few months where it's only at, say, minus... Or during those first few days, I should say, where it's only, like, minus 30, the heat won't be able to get through the insulation fast enough to counter that heater. But as it does, it's got, this heater is potentially going to take the edge off by about 30 degrees. The next layer is going to have the same thing happen by that gas heater. So when this one cools down to the extent that it's leaking through into the next layer, this heat will then become effective, etc, etc. Now, the other bonus to this as well is that with this many people being crammed into such a tiny little room, we would need... To, if we wanted to get everyone in there simultaneously like we've got right now, we have had to put down beds and, and addresses and whatever else. But if we wanted to get this many people in without using air gaps, we would have to fill all of this spare space with heaters because we don't have those air gaps. We don't have the extra layers of insulation. By having the air gaps, not only does it do the thing I talked about previous, but it also gives us more room to put down heaters and, again, stagger that heat, which means in the central room, they've got more room for luxuries. Hopefully, I've, expl I've explained that okay last time because I, I didn't... Uh, hopefully, I've explained it properly now because I didn't actually do it at all last time. But hopefully that will be sufficient enough. Um, somebody did say, what happens if they punch the gas tank? I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about it. I think we shouldn't even address it. Because it's quite obviously a problem. And I think if we just ignore it, it'll probably go away. One idea I liked that I haven't really done much with ever before is staggering the work schedules. So, what I mean by that is, is doing something like that where we add uh, an hour of sleep on. Then this guy gets the extra hour of recreation there. And then the extra hour of... Uh, the extra hour of work to make up the extra hour of sleep, and we copy that down. It's going to take a while for me to set up, because we've got, you know, like a lot of people, and we're now adding this kind of staggered work job. But it does mean that the highest priority stuff will be available at all times for everybody, depending on how we designate it. So it does make more sense. The only downside to that is we do have to be careful of things like night owls, nyctophiles, nyctophobes, uh, from the opposite perspective too. But I will get this set up. It will take a... Probably easier just to blank it all out with sleep and then and then do it as a kind of cascading thing, right? My only complaint with this is that because we have the additional um, social mods, it will mean that, say, for example, uh, Sharamus over here is only going to share an hour of recreation per however long it takes for these, obviously, to line back up with, with Cass. And say, for example, Cass and Sharamus are the only two people who could possibly become friends because their traits are compatible or whatever else. Does it mean that Sharamus might end up feeling isolated, as we've seen before? That's been an issue. Not so bad in a bigger colony, because, of course, you've got more chance of more people becoming compatible with one another. I like that, though. That's a work of art right there. Very nice. We'll see, we'll see how that works, but it should be should be fine. Obviously, it's going to take a couple of days for them to get used to it. They're waking up now, you know, with only half the sleep they would normally get. Some of them are being forced to go to work. Some of them are going to miss out on recreation. So it's going to take a couple of days for them to adjust to it. But on the flip side, half the colony are getting double the sleep, double the recreation, etc. Uh, now, thanks to this new little schedule. Okay, well, let's get these people buried. And then I think the last thing to do with the Ice Age is, is genuinely just the meals at this point, is it not? Oh. 
<laughs> Speak of the devil, it shall appear. Okay, there we are. So I guess that's a bit more of a sign that we should probably be mining some uh, some silver at some stage. Man, I think we've got a lot of silver or meteorites kicking around. Can I just go ahead and look at all of that? That's 279 designations, right? Or Oh, it's just doing an area? Well, that's a bit pointless. Uh, 163, there we are. Silver ore designations. I don't know how much one silver block provides with regards to ore, but that is it's quite a significant amount. I'm going to go and get Sharamus to very quickly maybe mine one of these so that we can see how much silver we get out of it. 38 ore. What was that? 173? Oh my god. Okay, hang on. Let's, let's just say like 180 times 40. Uh, it's going to be close to what? Like 4,000? Four, uh, no, no. Uh, 7,000 7, ore? Something like that? I don't know. Someone else can do the maths. Uh, that's that's not actually that much silver when you consider it. 7,000, what's that, like three of three people? I mean, you could argue, sure, it's, it's right on our doorstep. It's the opportunity cost is the only thing that's really costing us there. But, wow, that's a lot of steel as well. Holy shit. Um, it just doesn't seem that... I think we could probably save a lot of time just by having someone craft something artistically rather than go out there mining it, you know? We could, we could definitely do more appropriate things to have our people make money. I think mining silver fresh out of the ground is, is probably the, the, the lowest priority, perhaps. Someone on Discord sent me a phenomenal big brain message as well, basically saying, put a lightning rod next to where Fingers butchers the animals because the lightning from his immortality quickening should, uh, might, give a power boost. And I think that's a genius idea. So we are going to sacrifice a small amount of Kemru in exchange for harnessing an immortal's lightning powers? I mean, that sounds... Almost war crimes. This is pretty big. We've just finished quick draw weaponry, which means I can give all of those people before who just stood at the sidelines and cheered as insects ripped apart the raiders. We give those guys guns. They can help us kill the insects and the raiders. And more importantly, we can go on to bionics. This is going to make Sharamus. Why are you down? Uh, I'm going to take a wild guess. Orc fist. Gi Giga locust. Hey. What about you? Giga Locust? Hang on, I thought the Giga Locust was killed by the trade Was there another one? Or maybe it healed? It's not... Im it's immortal! <laughs> wow. Um... <laughs> of course it would be. Of course it would be. Um, Fingers is no longer capable of walking. You know what you could do? You could take your vengeance, my friend. Five, let, let, fingers, let fingers down from there. Unbelievable. Of course the Giga Locust would end up being the Immortal. Uh, out of ev we beheaded everything but the Giga Locust. Give me that. Oh. <gasps> Greater Immortal. We've never seen this before in the history of RimWorld, my friends. Greater Immortal on fingers. Wow. How's Pork doing? Because this is the second time Pork's been wiped out in the past couple of days. Robo Daddy, get on Pork. Uh, in terms of tending, please. Doves, you can you can cancel that crap. That's that's a waste of time. Let's go for bullpup rifles for every man, woman, and child. Uh, that's probably the best thing we've got, right? Yeah, I think so. Give them that. Uh, that's 30 steel, 30 plasteel, 7 components. My god. Um, and how many of those do we want to build exactly? Doves has a hunting rifle, which is pretty garbage, so it could be upgraded. I'm going to put you there. Um... Pork has an assault rifle, so he's fine. Same with Roger Wilco. Your LMG is okay. Could definitely be upgraded. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's all of these people that need an upgrade, is it not? So we've got to order up eight of them? Good lord, that's going to be expensive. Okay, get to work. Oh, why didn't I strip those corpses before we buried them? Shit. Uh, we could exhume the top three mass graves and see if they had any rifles on them. Uh, we've also got a heavy SMG and a battle rifle in here, which is which is pretty significant. Okay, okay, take the S heavy SMG. Uh, somebody left a comment saying that cost versus effectiveness or, or stopping power. The the heavy SMG is actually really good. Um, go and go ahead and equip that as a side. I'm going. Okay, you know what? Those two don't really need the upgrades anymore. Then I'm I'm happy to keep those on. Um, you definitely need one still. So I'm going to put you here. Why don't we just say instead then six ball pups rather than eight because that's so expensive. There's just, there's just way too many components going in there. And it's going to take decades to actually craft that many. Um, I might... Oh, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to cancel the prioritized work. Um, what I might do as well here... Let's go ahead and clear that. I might go and dig up these graves very briefly with somebody who doesn't really care. Uh, fingers will be fine, I'm sure. <laughs> I should really check if we've got a psychopath, but I think Fingers is probably okay. Right, what have we got here? Um, gear. Nothing. Double action revolver, double barrel shotgun, beer pump shotgun, auto pistol. Not ideal. Right, let's open these ones up. We've got uh, LMG. That's good. Hunting rifle. Hunting rifle's quite nice for 
hunting, funnily enough. Uh, we've got a revolver. Right, so what I'm going to do then is we're going to strip the the LMG. We're going to take the uh, hunting rifle. What else did we have here that was useful? None, none of the others, right? So what we'll do then is we'll just very quickly get these guys stripped and buried. Um, Prototype stripping that. Get the rest of them buried, please, fingers. And then we'll start on some other graves. I don't want to open up too many graves at once. Otherwise, it's going to be a micromanagement nightmare. This is quite... This is quite the flood of corpses. Uh, we found another heavy SMG. So, Cass, you can you can come and grab that one for me if you don't mind. Uh, good. Okay, so our people are armed. Uh, stop, please. <laughs> They're armed. We did have to go wade through corpses to get it. And again, the ball pops would be a nice upgrade, but it's, it's not super high priority now. Um, so, you don't have anything. Moira doesn't have anything. Doves is fine, but let's put you right at the bottom there. Same with, same with Koo, because Koo and uh, Doves both have... Regular old boring old hunting rifles. Why are you doing that? Why don't we give you a hammer? Um, because <coughs> apparently hammers are better at what was it like like any sort of general crafting speeds. And everybody knows you need a hammer to build a gun. We are that should help a little bit. It's not going to be phenomenal, but again, it'll, it'll be all right for a little while. I'm pretty happy with things, and I, th I think we're ready for the ice age to happen in a couple of days. The only thing we're, we're lacking here is is package survival meal. So let's go ahead and copy. How many? How many have we got? Uh, how many have we got, friends? Why are they not cooking my bloody meals? They're not cooking at all. What? Uh, cook, 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 cook. Watch your boko fingers. Where are these meals going, brother? Cook. Roger Wilco. Hauling steel. Oh, I see the issue here. Because we'd set them to, to haul every steel in the world. Stop. Cooking four simple meals. Problem solved. <laughs> I did, to be fair, tell them to haul... Something close to 4,000 blocks of steel, which is looking good on the, uh, at the, the outliner here. Uh, not so good when it comes to them all starving to death in a couple of days. Two days spent solidly cooking meals. I don't think we really have much to worry about there. Although I have to ask, why are you still not cooking packaged survival meals? Should I... I need material. What? Okay. Because we need meat. We need tasty meat for the Oh, right. I see the concern here. Right, it's my bad. I, it's where we kind of half finished doing a lot of things at the end of an episode, and I completely forgot to uh, obviously get the meat, which is what you need to cook package survival meals. Hopefully, we'll start cooking some now. There we go. That's what we like to see. I'll also designate some more animals for hunting pretty urgently. Um, I might drop down hauling to a, a priority two job temporarily, and then we'll go ahead and up hunting as well. Survival is now key. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Remind me to never move people around ever again. Doves back to the bottom there. Oh, what have I done? <laughs> oh, oh my my works list. Okay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't it doesn't matter too much because we know it kind of works. Um I'll redo that between episodes. How about that? Because that's gonna really that's gonna really bother me. Right, wildlife. Slay. Kill them all. Muffalos, tasty. Tasty muffalos, tasty boar, tasty fox. Not so tasty boom rat. That's a very spicy boom rat. Let's go for rats as well. They can draw straws on who gets to eat the rat and... What have we got here? Rat and corn meal. What was that? What the fuck is that? Oh, it's someone hunting. Get this. A rat. And apparently fucking missing. Coo. <laughs> oh, come on. I was like 12 shots to take down a big mouse. Thought that might happen. Okay. Uh... Oh, okay, 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 okay. Here's the plan. Uh, everybody stand here. You two are sacrificial. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna swing you around. No running, no running and gunning. Running and gunning is now officially illegal. Run, please run. Don't let the piggy get you. Right, run and let's see if you can cut through. Cut through. Watch this. Ultra instinct. Perfect. That was next tier. Oh dear. Well, maybe not. <laughs> maybe, maybe not quite as much as I thought. Okay, right. Let's get you down here. Uh, Cass, just keep running. Cast keep running. Give them a wide berth. Let these guys get a long shot on them. There we are. That's what we like to see. Okay. Uh, right. So what we're going to do is clear the, clear the boars out of there. Oh, God. Cast run. Uh, clear the boars out of there. Let fingers. No, no, no. Let Robo Daddy come in and rescue Koo. He's going to die in three hours. Okay. We don't have time for that. Uh, uh, sleeping spot. Let me go medical. And then I have to forbid just about every freaking bed in the colony. There we are. And then Robo Daddy, let's get you rescuing Koo. And hopefully that's all it takes. All right, get up here, get up here, get up here. Okay, okay, watch out, watch out, watch out. Don't shoot Cass. Okay, we're fine. Oh, that was a bit messy. But hey, that's plenty of packages of other mills. Oh, there we go. Wow, another quickening there from a fox, I think it was, or a... God knows what it was. I, I don't know what comes after Greater Immortal. Because the highest tier is Apex Immortal. And, and that apparently takes a lot of work to... 
to get up to. Then. Stan, it's one day before the Ice Age begins and we are in a, a, the middle of a food crisis. Actually, I don't know how much of a crisis we're in now. No, it's not really a crisis. It's just more of a food. How are we looking over there? Um, 38 packaged flour mills. Yikes. Okay. It's not ideal, but it's 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 not quite the, the, a food crisis. Um, oh, we need an extra bed too. 15. We've got 7 and 7. Oh, dear. Um, right. Okay. Let's see if we can build another one. Yes, we can. Luckily enough. Stan, what do you want? Okay, how many of them are there? Oh, there's bloody loads. Well, on the plus side, though, everyone's got a gun now, I think. Um, there's also some packages of our mails falling from the sky there. Right, we have mortars, but bear in mind we spent all our chem fuel on wars. We have 75. How quickly do you think doves could churn out a... Churn out some shells? Oh, not everybody has a weapon, I should also point out. Uh, let's crank it. Let's go get the... Um... But we got auto pistol, we got bullpup rifle, so that'll do. Um, go ahead and equip that one. You go ahead and equip that one. High explosive shells. Let's see, let's see if you can just make some quickly as possible. Boom. Okay, very nice. Um, how many did we get? One. <laughs> one shell. One shell well placed might be all we need, so I'm not too concerned. Let's get Robo Daddy on it. Uh, mainly because of his high intelligence. And we've also got shooting stat there too. We do have the mod that makes... Mortar's more accurate with intelligence, because that just makes fucking sense. Okay, let's try and hit that. Let's try and hit that. I will take that. That's okay. That's a good second place prize. Knock down, uh, knock down two, killed one. Incredible. One of them there, though, has... What the hell is that thing you've got, my friend? Plasma piercer. Okay, heavy rifle capable of shooting metal cord nails covered in plasma held in place by an energy field. What?! These people have charge weaponry, and that guy has a magic Star Wars gun. Right, okay. Um, I see the, the raids are really up in the ante, aren't they? Um, oh, so Z Z Z Zomzen, uh, whatever his name is, was a guy who fell from the Empire that I was coming to rescue. Um, but obviously where I got Robo Daddy to man the mortar, he's, he's kind of just yeeted him on the floor. Okay, I wasn't expecting them to actually fire so early. To be honest, I was kind of hoping that would be enough to bait them over. Okay, let's go and see if we can... Let's see if we can wake him up here. Actually, sending Sharamus is a horrible idea. We've discussed that before. Uh, fingers, get to work. Luckily, it's raining, so I'm not too concerned about incendiary shells coming in, especially. Roger Wilco is a sad boy, but that's okay. Sometimes you just got to take time to wander around in, in sadness as incendiary shells drop on your head, you know? Right, let's get everyone into position here. Um, who are we lacking? I'm going to bring everybody over, because I know a lot of them don't actually have um, don't actually have an area. Right, let's put you, like, here. Please fuck off with that. They missed. Okay, luckily enough. What's the range on this rifle? What are we looking at here? Huge, but not huge enough. Come a little bit further forward. Oh, that's not ideal, is it? Let's come around this side. I need you to shoot this. Although, to be honest, he's only got one more shell left. Um, Let's shoot him and let's steal his mortar. Oh, please don't get shot, though. That would be, that would be bad. Well, we, we, we hit Terry. Fucking Terry. Body blocking us there. Fingers, please be careful, for Christ's sake. Come on, fire again, fire again, fire again. Here we go. Anti-material rifle. If we knock one more down, I imagine, they'll probably just come and attack us anyway. Nothing that time. Not a, not a worry. Is that getting ready to... That's getting ready to fire again. Okay, I don't care about forced as... Yes! Nice shot. Boom. What a lad. Okay. Get into cover. What's going to happen now? Tuttle's on it instead. Right, come back round. Let's see if we can take out some of these long-range boys. Oh, that's not really in cover, is it? Oh, I think that was a massive whiff. Oh, yeah, that could have been further away from anywhere that would have hurt. We should probably start retreating now, because I don't believe they have any more shit. Oh, they've got six more. Okay. Oh, what a shot. Amalia doesn't even know what hit her. We completely shot out her eye, and she stood there, standing her ground, with her rifle aimed. That's the type of person we need to recruit for our colony. Holy shit. That's insane. Oh, Fingers actually got hit then. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on, Fingers. Come on, Fingers. He got hit again. He got hit again. Okay, I'm pulling him out. I'm pulling him out. Get out of there, Fingers. Oh, he got hit again on the way out. Wow. Um, I don't think it's worth the risk of keeping Fingers down there, to be honest with you. Let's pull him out. And let's just take the last of these incendiary shells. I wanted to go and interrupt them. We've done a lot of damage. We've got four down, one bleeding out. So we've, we've done a lot of damage there, even though we didn't quite get to the stage we wanted. Ice Age is kicking in. This is why I don't really want to risk... Fingers going down before that starts. Bear in mind, he's one of our cooks. Where did that one land? My freezer! <laughs> ah, you son of a bitch. Okay, get in there. Help me. Put out the fire. Put out the fire. Put out the fire. 
How many degrees? That's a lot of degrees for a freezer. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. Draft up. Defensive positions, people. This is not ideal. Uh, how you doing, Fingers? Have you healed up at all? You have not. Uh, can you just, like, go and... Just, like, go and lie down somewhere and let Rubber Daddy tend you? There you are. Right, Rubber Daddy, go and tend to him. We're just gonna stand watch as these last few shells come in. They've only got four left. Seems like they kind of... Ah, oh, they're starting the colony. That's what we wanted to see. Doves has got an infection. Doves was hit by... Oh, burnt by the superheated... Right, by the superheated. Go and lie down. You get yourself a break. Okay, here we go, team. Let's spread our people out a little bit, because I don't like them being quite this close together. There we are. Very good. Okay, what a mess. What an absolute mess. This is the easy part. I want your gun. Good lord, die! What is this person? <laughs> ah, high and go juice. There you are. Pain times. Pain, pain is obviously much, much lower with that. Come on, come on, come on. There we are. Very good. Oh god, we are getting peppered. That's a an area of cover I didn't actually expect. Bobbit is down. They are fleeing. Nice work, nice work. Okay. Not fantastic. Really not good at all. Poorly handled, but we're alive. So with regards to survival meals then, this has gone a little bit it's gone a little bit pear shaped. We've got 36 on that right there. We need to move the simple meals over to this one. Uh that one's on a on a, on an outer layer so that we can obviously cool those. This is not good. Ultimate, this is not ideal. We've got two people going on a tantrum, so they are just walking around the entire base smashing it up, which is very annoying. Cass and five. Everybody's tended, and no one's dying. That's the important thing. Oh my god, you people. They've just given up. They, they've all just given up. We're so close to the line here. How are we looking? Minus, it's, it's only minus two. We've got a long time before the before the Ice Age starts becoming a, a, a significant problem. Ah, the solar fly is ending. Excellent. Finally, we can carry on cooking frigging meals. The last thing we need when we are up against the wire like this is a solar flare. Fingers, wake up, cook. Roger Wilco, uh, stew keeper, wake up, cook. Let's get right on it. Another slaver. Um, it's a bit pointless now. I mean, again, we still can't afford them, but also it's a bit pointless now that we haven't got enough beds and the meal plans aren't really going to go to plan with, with with an extra person. So what are we, what are we looking at right now? We've got 14 people. Uh, 15 people. I was going to say I thought we were missing a person. We've got 15 people. We've got 142 package survivor meals. That's 10 meals to last them the whole of December. That's less than one meal a day. <laughs> uh, this is bad. This, this, is, this is what we would know in the trade as a whittle fucky wucky. Um, excuse, sorry, can we get these friggin' meals over to the other storage area, please, people? Regular base is still livable. Their bedrooms are 20 degrees, the uh, the actual recreation room is 9, the dining room is minus 6, but don't worry about that too much. Uh, work room is, is 6 degrees, the office is 8. When it gets to like minus 50 outside, then I think we need to start jumping ship over to, to the new place. We're at 168 meals. I mean, every meal we cook is another day of food, so we just need to we just need to stay here for as long as possible. Fingers loudly insulted, Roger Wilco's height. You tall man. <laughs> <laughs> devastating. Absolutely devastating. Would you fuck up a man dressed like that? With ballistic goggles and a sombrero made of burlap. Right, we're down to our last bits of meat now. So these are going to be the last few packages of our meals we're able to cook. In fact, I think that is the last one right there. Oh, wait, a couple more. Got four simple meals. Yeah, that's it for package survivor meals now. So we've got left are the simple meals, which I will copy over into this one as well. Yikes. Okay. Um, uh, Roger Wilco, you better get to work on that one, Chief. So all the package of uh, simple meals going in this one. Um, so right now we've got 17 simple meals and 264 packaged survival meals. Will that be enough to survive? Uh, you know. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I'm sure it'll be all right. We, we've, we've got through worse with less technology and less comfortable buildings. So I think it's almost time we lock everyone away for the winter. Barnet replacement's finished. Wow, that was good timing on that one. Okay. So that's the last research we can really do for winter. Uh, Roger Wilco did not accept Fing's apology about his height. Calling him a tall boy was just not... Uh, it's just unacceptable. It's just unacceptable. Let's get them to... What do you think? So minus 45? I think now's the time we're going to lock them away. Let's do it. Draft up. In you go. I'm setting everyone to clean. No, no, no. Draft up. Can we Can we just stand? That's something something like that. There we go. <laughs> Very King of the Hill style around the propane heaters. Very good. Okay, how are we looking over here then? We need to get like, these meals preferably hauled, so I'll send send fingers to go and do that. It's kind of his last job here. There we go. On for bid. Lock that door. 
Good luck, people. Let's see how we do. Is that everybody definitely in there, correct? Uh, that is everybody. Minus 57 outdoors. The inner insulated wall, minus 3. Second layer, 19 degrees. So we've got the perfect freezer. We've got a middle ground for them to just do whatever it is they do when they're trapped over winter. And then that's really everything. Um, I really should set their schedules after doing my lovely schedule lineup here to just pure recreation. Uh, uh, recreation, but with, with sleep, so their sleep is kind of unified. Otherwise, they wake each other up and get very angry. Uh, so we'll do something like that. And then, honestly, good luck. Here we go. Winter once again. Let's leave it there for today, because as my colonists freeze, I, in real life, melt. And that's not... I'm, I'm jealous of these people with their minus 60 degree sea weather. Thank you all for watching. I spent a big chunk of today making sure that the coffee lists are finally finished and available. So if you guys want to head over to coffee, I put up a big post earlier today where you guys can go and check the public facing coffee lists. Obviously, uh, full real life names have been removed from the list along with those people who asked to... Not receive a shout out. You guys have all been taken off. Nicknames being changed, etc. I believe are all finished too, but it couldn't hurt people double checking because I have had to juggle 500 names this month. So it's been a bit of a pain in the ass. The end screen card that you're looking at right now with your eyes, I will update when I've got that final list up together because I don't want to have someone's name on screen and say they, they don't want it up on screen. But for today, the shout outs are coming straight from Coffee. A big thank you goes out to Kyle Madoctor, Don of Bonaversalis. <laughs> Philosophical you prize Callum James 3 Scott L Fire Scream Sideshow C Tom Skaz Ethox Devorder I Stab Cows Zetlock White Stormin and everyone else over at Coffee. I will mix those lists when I have had the final thumbs up for everyone just to make sure that those names are accurate and people are comfortable with those being shouted out. A thank you as well goes out to Alexis, Panther Pearl, Athom, Monster, The Thick Mick, Noises Dungeon, Dancing Lucifer, Conchua Bee, Groggy, Ray Karinga, Sanit Lover, Madness, El, El Nada, Stormcrayer, Pyro Tika and everyone else over at Coffee as well. Apologize if I'm butchering your names. Look, <laughs> it's going to take a while to get used to everything that's going on here. Uh, if I do butcher your names, feel free to send me uh, a, a guide on how to say your name good because I don't want to mess up somebody's name for, for episodes and episodes and episodes and have everyone laugh at me. Thank you. Uh, see you all tomorrow.